All right, welcome back, guys. Happy Monday. I hope you had an amazing weekend, hopefully playing a lot of the New World beta. And if you're a New World player and a WoW player, then happy days. Phase 2 is on the horizon this week. We're going to be on the PTR testing SSC and TK. If you want to see me live streaming it, check me out on SJ Gaming Live. I'll put a link in the description. Don't know why I'm pointing up there and a card up the top anyway. So just click the card, click subscribe. Come and watch me over there live streaming. I'll be live streaming New World as well, obviously. Now, what are we talking about today? I want this video to basically serve as a really good foundation video for anybody that wants to play New World. So it's going to explain all the basics in detail with visuals. That's it. That's all you need to know. So what do the stats do? How do they work? What do the weapons do? How do they work? It's going to, and it's going to be quite short as well because it's going to be basics. What we'll then do in future videos is do a bit of a deep dive into each of the things. So, you know, we might do a deep dive into the rapier, into the hatchet, into the spear. These are all weapons, by the way, if you're completely new to New World. So what I want to talk about first, and it might seem like it's in a strange order, but there is logic to it. So I want to talk about armor first, specifically the different types of armor and how they affect your gameplay. And the reason I want to talk about that is because it's important for you to understand what the what the consequences are. If you get a really nice blue or epic piece of armor and it's heavy and you're a healer, you might look at it and go, oh, them stats are beautiful and put it on, but it does have consequences. So they're the, they're the consequences that I want to explain and show you now. I, I am a healer at the moment. I'm level 25, well, halfway to 26, and I'm a healer. So if you look up here at the top left, well, down at the bottom left here has got a good sort of breakdown of your stats. You can see your mana, your um, stamina, and your health, and your gear score overall, and then the bonuses to your stats that you get, and then physical and elemental damage reduction. That's great, but that's not what I actually want us to focus on. I want us to focus on this bit up here. So equip load. I'm light, so I'm classed as light at the moment, which when you're classed as light, you you get 20% bonus damage. Now, I want that bonus damage because more damage I do is more healing I do in, in my healing style. Now, you can see that this headwear is light. I've got a medium chest. Uh, I've got light legs, light boots. You know, I, the rest will be light, obviously. You can have like the odd medium piece in there and still stay under the light threshold. So as a healer, let's say I'm trying to keep the group alive and something decides to charge me, I can roll out of the way. And that's a long roll, you know. It, it, it really can get you out of trouble quite quickly. But then if we was to slap on a another piece of medium gear or heavy gear, I've got heavy gloves, perfect. If we put these heavy gloves on, you can see that I'm categorized now as medium. So while wearing medium weight armor, your dodge is a quick hop. So instead of a roll, you deal 10% bonus damage. So that's half the bonus damage that you would deal if you had light, if you was categorized as a light load. And control debuffs you apply last 10% longer, which is great. That's you know 10% longer on your debuffs is is nice if that's what your role is in your group or in PvP. That's what you want to be doing. Now the reason this is a big deal. Don't get me wrong. I haven't got all the heavy armor in my bag to show you what heavy does, but as you can imagine, heavy. Quickly looking back, while wearing heavy armor, your dodge is a slow sidestep, so it'll be even worse than a quick hop. Your block stability is increased by 15%, and crowd control debuffs you apply last 20% longer. So that's fantastic. Fantastic. But when I show you the difference between the roll and the quick hop, you will understand why having that quick hop is uh, it's, it's a bit damaging, especially as a healer or, or someone who wants to just stay at range and just pump damage into the boss. And so let me just show you that first. So you've already seen the roll. Now I'm categorized as medium. This is a quick hop. So it's not too bad. It's a bit like a shimmy, a shimmy, shimmy slide. You know, it's not that bad, but it's still nowhere near as good as the roll. Now, if we go back in and we just change it back and we'll just put our actual uh, our actual gloves on that we want to use to get back under the light threshold, you can see here the thresholds. So up to 15 is light, up to 30 is medium, and then anywhere above that is heavy. So I don't know if you've noticed this line before, if you've, if you've played the, the beta already, but that is your gear weight line so moving on now we've spoke about the type of gear let's talk about the stats and what the stats mean so on here we've got intellect and focus we've got constitution intelligence all the stats are strength dexterity 
intellect, focus, and constitution. And now you might compare it to WoW or instantly be like, well, strength probably gives two attack power. God, the dexterity probably gives one attack power, but gives crit. Mm, you're wrong, because it actually benefits individual weapons. So you've got to remember, this is a classless game. You create a character. That's it. You don't create a class. What dictates your role in a group or your role out in the world is the weapons you use. You can equip two weapons at a time. Now, the main things is sword and shield is for tanking, although some other weapons do have tanking ability. But sword and shield is the primary go-to tanking weapon weapon style and then life staff is for healing all the others are a mix of cc dps maybe bleeds maybe debuffs maybe direct damage maybe damage over time you know that they they all vary largely to the point where they're all fun to play because no two weapons really feel the same so if we have a real quick look at the weapons and then we'll look at the stats and i'll explain how the stats play a part on your weapon but not just that your stats play a part on your professions as well so you may even have a mining set and not just for magic find. So if you've seen my other video where I was talking about mining, you can get chance to find magical items inside nodes when using magic find gear. It's not that. I mean a specific mining set as in your primary attributes. So jumping back in game, if we go to the, we the, the weapons tab, and we will look at a few other bits before the, the video finishes, but if we look at, like you can see, sword and shield, rapier, hatchet, spear, great axe, warhammer, bow, musket, fire staff, life staff, and ice gauntlet. Like I said, life staff is for healing, sword and shield is for tanking. And then when you go into any of these weapons, you get two very different skill trees. Don't be put off by the life staff here. It says healing in one tree and protector in the other. You're instantly thinking, well, Protector sounds like a tanking tree, Scott. No, it's not. It, they're both healing trees, but just two slightly different styles of healing. And then if you go into Sword and Shield, you've got Sword Master and Defender. So yes, Sword and Shield, you can do some good damage as, but also it's got your go-to tank tree in it as well. Now, when you level, you unlock, you gain XP. So your character gains XP. That's the level you use to spend your attributes. And then you also gain weapon XP from the kills from but that's from kills from physically using your weapons whereas obviously you gain character xp from a, a simple things like gathering and handing quests in weapon xp you need to be using it to fight but they're two separate things so you could get to level 60 and still have a level one weapon if all you've done was run around chopping down trees to level do you know what i mean it's that you want to have a good balance of getting character xp and weapon xp all at the same time so if we look at the attributes next so you can see strength dex intelligence focus and it shows you here which weapons the the, the particular statistic or the stat or the attribute scales with so strength is sword and shield great axe warhammer hatchet and spear dexterity also affects the spear because if we go into the spear it will show you damage scales with dexterity and strength so it, it's got two attributes that actually help its damage so if we then go back into the attributes what i was talking about about having a mining set or a profession set when we look at these attributes there's break points every 50 points of attribute spent that was difficult to try and say so every 50 points of each attribute you get you get a bonus and each of them gives a different bonus to a different profession or well, a different gathering profession so if you wanted to be a miner like that's what you want a character that's pure mining nothing else you probably will have it as a gathering alt because you'll just go maximum strength maximum strength gear as well but maybe keeping your load light so maximum strength but on cloth gear so you can move around a bit quicker roll less get like get encumbered in less time etc you know just to run around and mine better so what i mean by this is when we look this will be the 50th point where you'll get five percent damage to melee weapon uh, melee light attacks and 10% mining speed when you're at 100 points you'll get plus 20 to your encumbrance as well as 10% damage to melee weapon heavy attacks now the 20 encumbrance is obviously going to help you when you're going around gathering and then the next one's going to give you a 10% decrease in weight of mined items then you're going to get 10% mining speed then you're going to get 10% yield increase when mining which is massive and then you're going to get 25% chance to mine an ore with a single swing at the moment when you start mining it takes ages like if well, it doesn't it feels like it takes ages the bigger the mine the longer it takes to, to sort of keep hammering away at it now a one in four chance just to go bang and get all of the ore out of it is massive so this is what i mean you could see gathering uh, crafting or gathering profession 
like alts, specific alts because of this. Otherwise, you're going to be respecting your skills all the time, your you know your attributes all the time. Every time you want to go out into the world and do something different, that's attributes. Hopefully, that was fairly digestible. You understand. You've kept up. You know what they all do. They all scale with weapons. Now let's have a quick look at some other little minor bits that are not overly important, but it's good to know that they're there. So what I want to talk about next is obviously your trade skills. So these are all your trade skills, and yes, you can max all of them on one character. Now, like you can see, I focus mainly on mining, tracking the skin in. A little bit but it's mainly mining and smelting and where's my engineering and engineering they're the three that i've been doing the most of but don't get me wrong still not been doing a great deal of those because me and the boys have been running around doing lots of pvp and uh, expeditions so and the next one i want to show you is achievements now achievements if you like being a completionist is great you know because it can it, you can literally grind achievements you know on your way to 60 if that's what you want to do just look at what ones you know you want to unlock and then just focus on them if achievements are your thing then obviously you will absolutely want to get cracking on that and then if we just look at the map it's good that you understand the map as well because in each settlement you can basically set your in you know a hearthstone like wow let's just say it like that which you can use once every hour and when you buy a house you've also got that which you can use every three hours but you can reset the cooldown on the teleport to house with a, a material called azoth which you'll get plenty of just naturally leveling your way from one to 60 that won't be an issue at all as long as you stick to your main storyline so you get the azoth staff as early as possible it really it's really a not azoth is a non-issue you don't even need to worry about it. i seem to be maxed all the time just from playing the game but you get fact your faction so there's three different factions there's syndicate covenant and the marauders now once you basically align with a faction which you normally get done before level 10 to be honest i think it was around nine when i done it if i remember rightly it's been a while since i started this character but then you can get missions from your faction leaders and now what well, your faction leaders in each settlement and it will be free very easy quests that are repeatable i'd recommend every time you go back to to a town to pick up quests you grab all your faction quests and you grab all the town board quests the town project board in this particular settlement which is windsward is up just there so you want to have a look for the icon get all your town board project quests which will be things like if we look in my journal hunting turkeys getting 30 pieces of timber acquire and deliver 40 steel ingots 20 lumber eight goats these are all things that you're just going to do naturally while you're running around so it will give you something to do going from point to point so you'll grab all the quests in a town you'll grab free faction missions all your town board missions and then maybe do your story story mission at the same time you know, and then as you're running around, you'll be like, right, I need to remember to chop down trees for one of the town projects. I need to remember to get all the mines that I need to get for, for another town project. Faction leader wants me to go and get three things out of some chests in a particular waypoint. You know, go and do that. But you want to maximize the amount of quests you've got in that zone so you can just make a big circle around all of the points which you'll see on your map and just absolute maximize the amount of XP you're going to do in one trip before you go back to town and hand in. One last thing that I want to talk about is territory standing. So you will level up your territory stand in as just doing natural things in that particular zone so this zone here is brightwood so brightwood i've currently got four points to spend because i've been doing a little bit in here yesterday so now i'm number i'm rank five basically you know i've unlocked number five so if we look these are the things you can get so station fee trading tax and storage so you're going to get a choice of three every time you get a new standing point. Now I've got four to spend. It will be good to show you. So I've currently unlocked storage space in two or three different places, you know, really high. So I don't feel like I need any more storage at the moment. But I could use this particular settlement as my primary pr primary place to trade because I haven't got a settlement where I trade at the moment. So if I show you my perks in my most my highest one, you can see that I've got storage increased by 100 gathering speed by 21% and I can own a house. So they're the things that I've unlocked there. I've not actually picked XP in any of the zones. So Brightwood might be one where I go for trading tax. And now I'm going to go for maybe more territory standing so I can get to Brightwood, my Brightwood territory standing up quicker to be able to get to this level here to be able to buy a house there. Maybe I really want a house there, but Brightwood's quite a high zone. You might want to gather. You're going to have to be strategic about where you put these points. Me, however, I'm going to go standing gain in this particular example. I'm going to go for more XP because I don't really care. It's only the beta, but I will. I'll go standing gain again and then XP again, hopefully, if I get the option. 
Oh, no, I don't. Oh, house ownership in Winds Ward, though. That's nice. What, what I would recommend doing there is being a bit tactical. So you can get XP gain. Yes, the thing about XP gain is you've got to remember, when you get to 60, that territory bonus is now useless. But there will be territories where you're not going to go and do anything in anyway. So like your first zones, you could feel free to just keep banging. Every time you get the XP option, bang it in, in XP. Maybe XP and storage or whatever, you know, because it's the first zone. You're not going to go back there very often. The second zone, you're probably not going to go to very very often because they're lower level you know the higher level ones are where you're going to be spending all your time at 60 so they're the ones where you want to be maybe reducing tax increasing storage uh, buying a house you know all those sort of things so any guides that tell you not to buy the xp perk you know there, there is reasons not to do it i agree and maybe going for standing maybe going for harvesting but even the harvesting you're probably going to be harvesting in higher level areas when you're 60 rather than going back and spending time in the first zones so you've got to make your own mind up on that me personally Personally, I'm going to spend points on XP at lower levels. And then when I'm in the higher zone, so 40 plus, probably 40 plus zones, that's when I'll focus on, no, I want more storage there. I want to be able to buy a house there. I want cheaper trading tax and all of that because that's probably where I'll spend the vast majority of my time when I'm 60. So that's it, guys. I hope you found this useful. It is a very off the cuff breakdown video of, of all the you know all the mechanics really but it's the basics these are the things that now you know you can jump into the game and you'll be like oh yeah i know what uh, you know what skills i want i know where i find what my armor is and you know how i look at light medium and heavy you know I, hopefully it's just helped you in your first steps into eternum until next time when we start diving into the weapons subscribe to sj gaming live subscribe here like the video and i'll see you on the next one